Chapter 3. My Father Finds the Island. All right, he's going to get there. Hmm, I wonder, is that the island of Cranberry or Wild Island? I wonder which one he'll find in this chapter. My father hid in the hold for six days and nights. Twice he was nearly caught when the ship stopped to take on more cargo. But at last he heard a sailor say that the next port would be Cranberry and that they'd be unloading the wheat there. My father knew that the sailors would send him home if they caught him. So he looked in his knapsack and took out a rubber band and the empty grain bag with the label saying Cranberry. At the last moment, my father got inside the bag, knapsack and all, folded the top of the bag inside and put the rubber band around the top. He didn't look just exactly like the other bags, but it was the best he could do. Oh, and if we look carefully at the picture, you can see how these two bags are smooth. This one's lumpy. I think he's in there. Soon the sailors came to unload. They lowered a big net into the hold and began moving the bags of wheat. Suddenly, one sailor yelled, Great Scott, this is the queerest bag of wheat I've ever seen. It's all lumpy-like but the label says it's going to Cranberry. The other sailors looked at the bag too, and my father, who was in the bag, of course, tried even harder to look like a bag of wheat. Then another sailor felt the bag, and he just happened to get a hold of my father's elbow. I know what this is, he said. This is a bag of dried corn on the cob. And he dumped my father into the big net along with the bags of wheat. That was a close call. This all happened in the late afternoon, so late that the merchant in Cranberry, who had ordered the wheat, didn't count the bags until the next morning. He was a very punctual man and never late for dinner. The sailors told the captain, and the captain wrote down on a piece of paper, that they had delivered 160 bags of wheat and one bag of dried corn on the cob. They left the piece of paper for the merchant and sailed away that evening. My father heard later that the merchant spent the whole next day counting and recounting the bags and feeling each one trying to find the bag of dried corn on the cob. He never found it because as soon as it was dark, my father climbed out of the bag, folded it up and put it in his knapsack. He walked along the shore to a nice sandy place and lay down to sleep. Looks like maybe he's sleeping under a fruit tree. See those round fruits? My father was very hungry when he woke up the next morning. Just as he was looking to see if he had anything left to eat, something hit him on the head. It was a tangerine. He had been sleeping right under a tree full of big fat tangerines. And then he remembered that this was the island of Tangerina. Tangerine trees grew wild everywhere. My father picked as many as he had room for, which was 31, and started off to find Wild Island. I wonder if he has any peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or apples left, or if now his only food is tangerines. He walked and walked and walked along the shore, looking for the rocks that join the two islands. He walked all day. And once, when he met a fisherman and asked him about Wild Island, the fisherman began to shake and couldn't talk for a long while. It scared him that much, just thinking about it. Finally, he said, Many people have tried to explore Wild Island, but not one has come back alive. We think they were eaten by the wild animals. This didn't bother my father. He kept walking and slept on the beach again that night. It was beautifully clear the next day, and way down the shore, my father could see a long line of rocks leading out into the ocean, and way, way out at the end, he could just see a tiny patch of green. He quickly ate seven of the tangerines and started down the beach. 
it was almost dark when he came to the rocks. But there, way out in the ocean, was the patch of green. He sat down and rested a while, remembering that the cat had said, if you can go in the, out to the island at night, then the wild animals won't see you coming along the rocks and you can hide when you get there. So my father picked seven more tangerines, put on his black rubber boots and waited for dark. Oh, he's gonna cross that long line of rocks in the dark at night. So the other animals in Wild Island don't see him coming. Hmm. That sounds smart, but also dangerous. If we look at the picture, we can see him hopping across the rocks and there's a whale. There's a whale, maybe lying on a couple of the rocks. Can't really tell. There's the whale's tail. Hmm. It was a very black night and my father could hardly see the rocks ahead of him. Sometimes they were quite high and sometimes the waves almost covered them and they were slippery and hard to walk on. Sometimes the rocks were far apart and my father had to get a running start and leap from one to the next. After a while, he began to hear a rumbling noise. It grew louder and louder as he got nearer to the island. At last, it seemed as if he were right on top of the noise, and he was. He had jumped from a rock onto the back of a small whale who was fast asleep and cuddled up between two rocks. The whale was snoring and making more noise than a steam shovel, so it never heard my father say, Oh, I didn't know that was you. And it never knew my father had jumped on its back by mistake. Let's look at that again. So Elmer was going from rock to rock and then accidentally onto the whale and then kept going. And so, oops, sorry, I didn't know that was you. But the whale just slept through it the whole time. That's hilarious. For seven hours, my father climbed and slipped and leapt from rock to rock. But while it was still dark, he finally reached the very last rock and stepped off onto Wild Island. He made it. And while it's still dark, so the animals didn't see him coming. And the whale didn't wake up. So maybe nobody knows he's there. Let's stop and talk about this. All right, a couple of questions. So when Elmer was hiding in the bag, the empty grain bag labeled uh, cranberry, and then one of the sailors felt him and like grabbed his elbow in the bag, couldn't see him, and said, I know what this is. This is a bag of dried corn on the cob. Why would that make sense? Why would the sailor think it's dried corn on the cob? And then let's go back to one of our old questions about the name of the island of Tangerina. Do we know now why it's named the island of Tangerina? Yes, we do. Why is it named the island of Tangerina? And then another thing. The cat had said, if you can go out to the island at night along the, the rocks. Oh, oh, wait. The cat said, if you can go out to the island at night, because then the wild animals won't see you coming along the rocks and you can hide when you get there. Do you think there are actually wild animals hanging out on the beach at the end of the rocks watching like guards to see if anybody comes across the rocks during the day? You think they're guarding their wild island? It is a fiction story, so we can't think about boars in real life. Wild boars in real life wouldn't do that. 
but this is a story where the animals are more like people. I wonder, I wonder if they have guards. And then I had an I wonder when I was reading this chapter, and I thought, I wonder if Elmer's just doing this to save the dragon so he can fly, so he can get a ride. Or is he trying to save the dragon for another reason too? Does he have another motivation, another motive to help this baby dragon? What do you think? Hmm. Let's read the next chapter. <laughs>